It's interesting, as you mentioned, Steve Kerr goes right away to the point of we're going to start Embiid and we're going to start Drew again against Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico is a team that's built on uh, pl- you know, playing through small guards, playing through Jose Alvarado, playing through Tremont Waters, playing through Jordan, Haw- um, not Jordan Hawkins, Jordan Howard, excuse me. Uh, and they've got bigs who are not like stretch bigs, generally speaking, though, but they do have a lot of like six, seven, six, eight, six, nine guys. I watched them get waxed by Serbia yesterday. They had the unfortunate uh, problem of playing Serbia when Serbia needed to get back its point differential after getting blown out by the U.S. So Serbia just dropped a building on them and won by 41. Uh, Jose Alvarado also playing on a bum ankle really limits the ability that Puerto Rico has to generate offense. But so if you're looking at how you deal with Puerto Rico, all right, they're going to have to play through Jose Alvarado. Go get him, Drew. Uh, they're going to deal with some bigs that are going to try to like bully you inside and hit the glass. All right, Joel, this is an opportunity for your physicality. Also, go get those guys in some foul trouble. So there's I think there's a method to the madness for how Kerr is juggling the lineups. And we maybe do ourselves a disservice focusing overly on which guys don't play on a team that where there's anybody who doesn't play is an all star. You know, like it's you're kind of. Hard Derek White should have been justice for Derek White. <laughs> right. Fair enough. Uh, I remember reading a good story about how he was a, an analytics all-star, even if he didn't uh, he didn't actually make the team. Somebody wrote that. I forget who it was. It was me. It I was also, you. That's right. I also, I wrote about Jordan Howard, whose name he butchered, if our listeners Hey, I had Jordan aren't. H and I stumbled. There's, a, there's another NBA Jordan H. I had to get there. It was also second. Jordan Haw- Hawkinson, I believe is his full name, the Japan center. But Jordan Howard, December, I just pulled up the link, December 1st, 2017, because I was watching, I remember I was watching, back, back in my super draft days, I was watching tape of the UCLA, just their early season run back when Lonzo Ball was, at, maybe it was, maybe again, whatever. It was a UCLA game. I forget if Lonzo was there. Jordan Howard, just on Central Arkansas, obliterated UCLA. And I was like, this guy's like five nine and he's sick. So <laughs> I wrote a whole profile for SI.com about Central Arkansas star Jordan Howard. So shout out Jordan Howard for bringing it still to this day. But yeah, I am not anticipating. I mean, 20 years ago, Carlos Arroyo famously was the small guard who led Puerto Rico to a massive upset over the 2004 Americans that preempted the Redeem team in 2008. I'm not getting my hopes up, unfortunately, for Puerto Ricans out there that are hoping for a repeat 20 years later, unfortunately. But shout out to Jose Alvarado. Shout out to Josh Howard. And it's hold on a second. You just said shout out to Josh Howard. So after you oh on me for getting God. his name Josh wrong, Howard's you another guy I wrote immediately about. went and got it wrong yourself. So remove wow. the plank from your own eye, doctor. All right, let's get let's get things straight. And about if one of us is making a mistake on our coffee, maybe the other one's making a mistake with our coffee too. You know, I'm just listen, saying. Listen, listen, Josh Howard's another guy I profiled in my early career. I remember it was at Summer League 2014. We were back at Thomas and Mack Center where he was an all-star. This guy like makes a mistake. It's just, it's just a platform for him to tell another story. This is incredible. This is really funny because I remember, so I profiled Josh Howard. It was great. He was so nice. And running on Slam Online, I, the first platform that gave me a chance. And then this was back in the heyday of Grantland where anytime Jonathan Abrams wrote a profile, it like blew the hell up. And yeah. he had also profiled Josh Howard. And I remember one of my dad's best friends threatened I sue Grantland for him plagiarizing <laughs> me, not understanding that sometimes when there's an obvious story multiple over like a two week long event, multiple people are going to pursue the same angle. And I don't think as like a 19 year old college sophomore intern, that was a good way to get myself on the, the radar of some potential platforms that could have hired me. So I did not take legal action <laughs> yeah, over that story. Probably a good choice. Uh, I, don't, I don't know that that one would have worked out very well for you. Uh, one last just thing to say on Team USA, Steph, 14 points on 17 shots through two games, three for 13 from three. Steve Kerr had made a point to saying before the South, the South Sudan game, it's time for us to get him going. He has not gotten going yet. Uh, on one level, you would assume Steph Curry is going to get going at some point because he is Stephen Curry. On another, it's worth remembering that he was not exactly a huge scorer on the two FIBA teams that he played on. 
2010 World Cup averaged like five points a game in 10 minutes a game. Obviously, was like a more of a minor piece there. The 2014 World Cup, he was a star at that point, but like 10.6 points in 24 minutes a game shot well from three, but not an overwhelming, like other guys were the star scorers on those teams. And so I think Steph seemed as often pretty comfortable just being like, all right, you guys go ahead and I'll feed the ball. Like I'll move it around. Uh, I think he has seven assists through two games. Like he's playing well that way, but uh, we might not see avalanche Steph, uh, you know, as to the degree that we might expect it. I just want, I want to sort of caution people with that. And then, if, of course, if we do wind up seeing him hit nine threes against Puerto Rico, great. But I, <laughs> I wouldn't necessarily bank on it because I'm not sure that the run of the play is going that way. There will be some type because Steph's one shot he made against South Sudan, if I remember correctly, was the like last three in the last seconds of the game. And that's going to be important for tiebreaker stuff. Mm. Like, all these teams that are advancing are are two and zero oh. from a seeding standpoint. Point differential is really important, just like the in season tournament, which you know took that formula from events such as this. And it's a different aspect of the game. That's why you saw Dylan Brooks take a last second three in Canada's first win of the tournament. So that's just something to keep an eye on. And if, if Steph can fill, if Steph can get hot in a blowout against Puerto Rico, it's not just a win for him finding his form if it does add to that tiebreaker stuff that can help the seeding figure out, you know, it's going to be a crowded field in the knockout round. So, it just, you know, all these teams are 2-0. You're going to need your help to get that, you know, quote-unquote one seed and not just have a strong record. Yeah, as it stands, USA is has the, the top point differential in the tournament, plus 43. Germany, plus 33 through two games. Uh, Canada plus 17, France plus 16, Serbia plus 15. So, you know, your sort of usual suspects in terms of the teams you'd expect to be in medal contention, those are the ones that are 2-0, and those are the ones that are on the plus side of things. But uh, the margins need to, you know, the, yeah, you need to be mindful of the margins here. And, you know, any any so as Serbia did against Puerto Rico, the U.S., you would imagine would try to do the same thing come Saturday.